All right, so this is 2nd Edges chapter 16, verse, um, let's start at 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and will hide their sins. And that's the, that's why all these people is going to receive their death and their destruction. Because Yahweh Bashim al knows what's in your heart, man. Remember, when you read Genesis, the 6th chapter, when the Lord first destroyed uh, destroyed the earth on a on a uh, worldwide scale of all the people. The Heavenly Father was uh, mentioning something around the words. He he went down. And he seen what was in the uh, the hearts of men, and that it was only wicked continually. And that's why he came up with the conclusion: I need to flood these. I need to drop this water on these dudes, man. Right now, we in that time. The Heavenly Father's. His angels on the planet Earth, they see everything that everybody's doing, what everything everybody's thinking. And, and, and come to find out, the world is at an all-time high of wickedness, man. So the conclusion that Heavenly Father is like, look, I'm not, I, I promise I put the bow in the sky that I'm not going to flood them no more. But I didn't say I wouldn't burn their, I wouldn't burn their ass to death. You know, I didn't say I wouldn't cause famine to happen no more. You know what I mean? Or concentration camp FEMA troops, which is the near, towards the near future. He didn't say that. And that's what he's going to deliver. Alright? It says, Therefore, have the Lord exact, exactly searched out your works, and he will put you all to shame. The Heavenly Father searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. That time when people run around, screaming, blood squirting everywhere. People dead on the floor, hopping over dead bodies. FEMA troops kicking in your house. You, you in a reaction of fear. That's an shame to you, man. And everything else to come. You know how they show you on the uh, the knowing when that fire coming, everybody start hugging each other. You know, kissing each other, running. That's an shame. And the Heavenly Father gonna he gonna shame everybody on the planet Earth that didn't want to get right by him. Because this is his planet Earth, man. He created everything in this place. Right? He created everything in here. Everybody living in here, he gave everything life and breath. And you call yourself to be disobedient to your creator? Well, we'll see what your creator will do to you for being disobedient. Alright? It says, and when your sins are brought forth, you should be ashamed before men. And your own sins should be accusers in that day. Your own sin. Your own sin gonna be a, your accuser in that day. So say for instance, you could take sin out your body and create it to be a um a human form. And the Heavenly Father was asked that human form, hey, what this person been doing? And then that 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 sin would just spill the beans on you, man. Because your sin is gonna be your own accuser in that day. He did this, he did that, he did this, and he did that. And the Lord gonna be like, oh, okay. Um, to the famine, you know, to the FEMA troops. Matter of fact, reserve him for the missiles. Whatever your judgment is, man. All right. It says, um, what will you do, do, or how will you hide your sins before the Most High and His angels? That's impossible, man. Behold, Yahweh Himself is the judge. Fear Him. Leave off your sins and forget your iniquities. And that's the mind frame of those who diligently trying to search the Lord. The people that really sincerely in heart. We ain't talking about no, I go down to the street church Christian, man. We talking about those who are pure in heart, man. That's for Yahweh Bashem al That's down to the end. That's what they tell themselves. You know, they may not know their strengths and how, how far their limits are. With the Heavenly Father, but they do understand, they do know that they have the mind of giving, of have the mind of, Yahweh Shah, let that will be done with me. And I pray that that will be that I may be able to please you. You know, those men, that's what they, that's what they have in their heart. That, that's the ones that's going to leave off from their sins. They fear Yahweh Shemel Shah. Sincerely, you know what I mean? Uh, to meddle no more with them forever, so shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. 
So we understand the Heavenly Father said, look, that's a key, that's a jewel. Leave off from your sin, then I will guide you forth. So when you're at the end of the world, right, you're at the end of the world, the Heavenly Father is going to guide you through a bunch of tragedy, man. You know? And we only can speak at, we only can speak on it right now. But it's going to come a time when the, when our emotions is going to be, is going to be moving because of the simple fact that fear and death is all around us. You know? We going to, you know, we, but at that same time as that fear and that death is around us, yeah, how about Shema Asha is going to be guiding us through it, man? You know? And it's going to be amazing. Um, it says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they should take certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. It says, Behold, for the, bur the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, man. And that's what, you, man, Yahweh Hashem is going to allow these troops, these FEMA troops, the UN troops, these Russian troops, China troops, every type of troop, that, that, that's going to soon hate the whore, those that was in confederacy with thee should turn against thee according to Obadiah, I believe, you know, they all going to be over here just going hardcore, man, hardcore on the whole states, and the, the deaf angels of the Lord is going to be on them troops to do, do away with everybody who ain't right, everybody who ain't right, man, you're going to get found out, you're going to get searched out, you're going to die. The Lord ain't playing no games. You can call yourself running up to them hills, man. The Lord said you're going to run up to them hills and you're going to die of famine and you're going to be drinking your own blood and eating your own flesh up there. And then the Heavenly Father goes as far as to He's going to unleash uh, newly created creatures. Right? And then, hold it real quick. A lot of people don't even know about Leviathan. It was a recent video that came out dealing with Leviathan. Down, it was a video that it was some type of big form, uh, creature looking thing down there in Antarctica, way deep down in the ocean. All they could get is the, 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 the shape of it, man. You know, just a dark, big spot. People don't even know about Leviathan. Leviathan gonna come through. Remember, the scripture says it's gonna be a day like never before. So, you know, we finna meet Leviathan, man. You know, Lord for the go hard. Now in these times, it's gonna be so crazy. Only, only thing you could do is lean upon the Lord. You ain't gonna be able to run to Esau for comfort. That Esau gonna be running for comfort. The scriptures is explaining in Isaiah the thirteenth chapter that he should be uh, like a chase rope. You know, it's Esau bitch ass, bitch ass E man. So the only person you could lean on, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, is the Heavenly Father, man. Right? It says they should feed you uh, being idle with things offered onto idle. Because at that time, you're going to be idle, all right? Ain't going to be no jobs out here. Out here. Ain't going to be shit to do out here. And they're going to be wanting you to conform to the New World Order. And then they're going to offer you them things that's offered onto idols. You know? Being that RFID chip. Because that RFID chip summons up the New World Order. The currency of the New World Order, man. You know what I mean? And they're going to they're gonna test you. All of us going to get tested with that. That's the hour of temptation. We got to remember that, man. You know? And I, his brothers that had dreams where they, they were sitting down and they was getting tested to take the chip or not, man. You know? But, but if you trust in the Lord, you're not going to take that chip. Even if it may, that mean, may mean that death is going to be presented in your face, man. No? Bitch, <laughs> close your eyes, man. <laughs> you know, close your eyes and, and just hope to the Lord. Whatever happens, happens, man. You know what I mean? Um, and, they, and they that can sent unto them should be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. So... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you can either lose and win, or you can lose, or you can win and then lose. Meaning that, let me explain more clear. You can lose and then win. You cannot take the RFID chip, 
and face whatever trouble he's all gonna put in your face, and then to to win only to win with the Al Bashim Al Shai, or you could win with Esau, take the RFID chip, may have a little comfort for that little bit of time, and then you're gonna lose with the Heavenly Father. And who's greater? Who's the creation? Who's the creator? The Heavenly Father is. So you choose Esau's side, the Heavenly Father is going to get you. All right, You're going to be trodden underfoot because you can send it on to them. And you're going to be having reproach, man. All right? It says, um, all right, for, they, for there should be in every city and in, in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. And that's talking about Israelites, period. Y'all the ones that have that zeal for the Heavenly Father. You know? But remember that we on the top of that list. The Hebrew Israelites is on the top of the Project Megiddo list. Why? Because we have the truth. You know what I mean? We have the truth. So they're gonna be on us, man. And they're gonna be they're gonna come get us, man. The scripture said that we're gonna be brought before kings and and uh, princes to give a testimony of Yahweh Shai. But remember, brothers, Yahweh Shai himself had to do that. Yahweh Shai had to go before people, man. Paul had to go before him. James, John, everybody had to do this. This ain't nothing new. We Now we up. Uh, we in the last days and our time is coming up to, to basically step to the podium. And give our testimony. Whether they hate it or love it. You know? I don't care, man. You can hate my the message that I will deliver. I don't give a damn, you know? Shit. But I do care about what the Heavenly Father think of me, though. That's the mind frame we take it, man. You know? It says, uh, They should be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. And they're not going to show us no mercy. Don't even look to the damn white man for mercy. Scripture said, never trust thy enemy. They ain't going to show us no mercy, man. But fuck them. We don't need mercy from them. Hey, fuck bitch ass E. We don't need no mercy from that man. You know, look at the mercy that he showed us. Is the state that we in now. That's the mercy. The scripture said that the, um, the, uh, the, um, Slack it. Let me just grab it real quick. This Proverbs chapter 10, um, Slack it. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. The scripture said the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He gonna come sparing none. Because his mercy is, a, is cruel. Cruelty. That's the definition of the so-called white man. Just a, a cruel beast. Alright? It says, For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. They should be tried as gold is in a fire. Hey, do you do you think yourself to be be better than our father Abraham? You know, do you think yourself to be better than Yahweh Shai? Well, guess what? They got tried. They got tried. You know what I mean? So you you gonna get tried too? It says, "This shall be known whom I have chosen." The scriptures tell you that. Let's jump to it real quick. Uh, kind of found it. This is a, uh, this is Sirach chapter twelve verse eight. A friend cannot be known in prosperity, and an enemy cannot be hid in adversity. So the scriptures say, "Then shall you know who am I chosen, and they should be tried in the fire." You you don't know if a person is your friend if they're going through prosperity. You can look at the time that we in now. We able to this is that prosperous time. We able to uh, go out. We go to the store, purchase something. We need some shoes. Go get some shoes. You know, you need to get something for your family. Somebody gets sick, you go get something. We in that pro you can say that we in that prosperous time, but then when the adversity come, then you gonna know who's your friend and who's your enemy, man. A friend, uh, an enemy cannot be hid in adversity. So the heavenly Father, when He tests us, He gonna He gonna see who's really there and who wasn't, man. Then you're gonna know who's the Heavenly Father chosen. I, but I only could we only could pray that we're the Heavenly Father's chosen. That's all we could do. Just pray and hope and do what's right. You know? 
um, it's uh, verse uh, socket verse um, uh, seventy four. Hear, O ye beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Hashemel Shai is our guide. The Lord is our guide, man. We're going to come to the point where we're going to just call on the Lord. He's going to deliver us through every situation you're dealing with, man. You know, but you're gonna, we're going to have to require patience. The Lord going to be testing us in them hard-ass times. You may not eat for a couple days. And then that third day, the Heavenly Father finally decided, look, that was good enough. He showed me that he could even, he would go without bread for me. All type of scenarios. But the Heavenly Father is going to guide us, man. Through this famine, through this, it's like through this death and this destruction. All right? It says, and God, and the God of them will keep the commandments and precepts, set the Lord power. Let not your sins weigh you down, neither let them lift, lift, uh, iniquities lift themselves up. Because that's what we, man, that's what we deal with. That's one of the battles that we deal with. Having that, knowing that we, we fucked up. Having them iniquities within us. So we know that the Lord is going to judge the world for their iniquities, right? And we know that we are accompanied with, with iniquity. That could bring you down like, fuck, I ain't going to make it. Make you lose hope. But the Heavenly Father had this scripture written. Look, man, you don't even worry about that. It ain't about that. I know you messed up. You know, David explained it clearly that, that, he, that the Lord know that his sin. He cannot hide his sin from the Lord. The Lord is looking for those who are ready to repent and do what's right. That's what he's looking for. He know we messed up already, man. You know what I mean? It says, Woe be unto them that are bound with their sin and covered with their iniquities, like a field is covered with brushes, and the path thereof is covered with thorns, that no man may travel there through. So the Heavenly Father gave the analogy of people that's covered with their iniquity is like a... Like a dirt field that you can't walk through because it's just a bunch of thorns and thistles and brushes everywhere. You can't even walk through it. The path of the dirt field is just covered with, with thorns. You're like, damn, I got to walk around. I can't even cut through the dirt field. You know what I mean? The Lord going to destroy that type of person. And then verse 78 said, It is left undressed and cast into the fire to be consumed. All them brushes, all them thistles, which represent the sin, going to get thrown right in the fire, man. You're going to burn. And I'm cool off that. Hey, I'm cool. I don't want to burn, man. And I want to show y'all by Shema Shai that I don't want to burn. Whatever it takes in, in, the, in, the, um, in the journey to, to receive salvation. I don't want to burn. You know? So 2017, the year of famine. I mean, it's like the year of death. I don't know what the famine. Famine too, but, <laughs> but the year of death, destruction, and diligence. So, what category are you going to fall in? And it's two to one. Right? <laughs> two to one. Two thirds, one third. <laughs> two to one. Death, destruction, and then one, one side is the righteous side, which is diligence. What you got a one third, you got a two thirds. Two thirds going to receive death and destruction. One third is going to be diligent. You know? So with that, man, I'll just do a quick one. This 2017, the year of death, destruction, and diligence. Which one are you going to choose? You know? And with that, I'm going to close out. Say, Brock Day Howell, Brock Day Shalom, my Shalom, stay up and diligent. Shalom.